Resilience is a positive word. It's the capacity to recover from difficulties, to bounce back. But what does resilience mean when we are talking about the brain? This is a story of a community do-gooder who almost lost his life to violence. Here is his battle to help his life and his brain bounce back. Honey, you're gonna be a movie star. Did you know that? <laughs> I've always been one to help other people. I've done tons of resumes for people and just help them the next step in life to get them forward. At 10 o'clock on the night of October 30th, 2016, one of those people helped by Russell Erickson would return to his Clarkston home. Russell would answer the door to the person he knew and had helped, letting into his home a man who over the next hour would rob and almost beat him to death. Police say that when they first came upon that victim, they weren't sure he was going to live. They said that he managed to escape through this window here. When they found him, he was lying in a pool of blood on the driveway. I haven't repainted yet because that's the chemical they told us to use to clean the blood off the walls, turns the walls blue. It was a pretty traumatic night. The door was punched in half and then he came in and he broke the bed. I, this is a different sleigh bed now because it doesn't have the posts on it, but he broke the posts off my previous bed and just clubbed me with him relentlessly until I'd pass out and then if I'd wake up, he'd beat me again until I'd pass out again. And I went through that for about an hour and 20 minutes. Erickson finally escaped through a window, but his attacker followed him and continued to beat him in his driveway where neighbors saw and called 911. A police canine unit captured the attacker on a neighbor's porch. I had a traumatic brain injury. The brain bleed was the worst part of all my injuries. My eye sockets were both broken and my nose was badly displaced and I had a torn rotator cuff on the left side and then I had broken ribs on both sides. Erickson spent four days on life support. He had blunt trauma with someone striking his head repeatedly with a um, blunt object. So he had bruising and bleeding in the brain and swelling of the brain. And there's tearing forces that occur uh, within the small neurons or axons of the brain and therefore individual fibers of the brain are torn and damaged permanently. Dr. David Burke is the brain rehabilitation expert who treated Erickson. During that recovery mechanism, swelling will occur. Uh, with the swelling uh, comes a decrease in oxygen to parts of the brain that evolves over time, and therefore you can suffocate some of the brain in that early stages. You can squeeze the life out of some of the brain tissue from the swelling because it's got nowhere to go. Parts of the brain can die, but Burke says the understanding of the regenerative capacity of the brain has shifted over the years. Take axons, the small nerves in the brain that send signals to its destination, like making your fingers move. When I was in med school, we were told that's it, they don't, the, the axons do not regrow. But we now know that the axons do regrow, uh, but probably not in sufficient quantity to regrow portions of the brain that are damaged, and therefore the reorganization of existing tissue is very much the recovery. Russell did not lose function in his limbs, but because he was beaten all about his head, his injury to his brain involved many areas that were no longer functioning like they should. He had attention issues common to those with TBIs. He had severe vertigo, sleep, memory, and speech issues. He could move about the world seemingly normal, but nothing was as it had been before. There are things we can do to accelerate the healing of the brain. Medications serve as a foundation for the healing of the brain. They can help those attention issues, altered sleep cycles, debilitating headaches, dizziness, forgetfulness, depression, even thinking that feels slower. All problems caused by the trauma to the brain. Any problem with forgetting mid-sentence? When I get tired in the afternoon, I will have a hard time pulling a word out of my memory that I'm wanting to say. Okay. 
Medications support the brain and the person, making intense cognitive and physical rehab more effective. The more you attempt to do what ha has been damaged, uh, the more likely that the brain will reorganize. And in Russell's case, he's the most motivated guy that you'll meet. Face the mirror, ready? Step up, good, move back. And turn in your head right and left five times. The work to get back what was lost Three, excuse me. is hard. All right, five more seconds. There is physical. I'm gonna give you a little more resistance. Mm -hmm. Occupational. And speech therapy. You're right on with that. You don't want to be labeled as a brain injured person. Yes. <laughs> you are a person who had a brain injury. There is vestibular therapy to improve vertigo. And look at the red light. Mm -hmm. Almost two years after the night he nearly died, Russell has his life back. He returned to his job at 3M just months after the attack. So how is it that two people can have the same injury, but one will recover better than the other? One reason is genetics. A great example is uh, the boxing careers of Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. You know, arguably two of the best fighters uh, ever, and they arguably um, punched each other same amount of time, same amount of, you know, trauma to each. But Joe Frazier didn't seem phased by it, and Muhammad Ali got Parkinson's disease and was, you know, when I met him a few years ago, unable to speak, was having trouble walking, uh, had really deteriorated. In patients like Russell Erickson, there is something else that is harder to measure, something that does not show up in images of the brain or in measurements of the body. I was given a little stone, and you put it in your pocket, and every time you touch it, you think of something to be grateful for. He has a supply of gratitude stones for himself and just about everybody he meets. For the longest time, I looked at these pictures, and then I actually put them away so I wouldn't start relating to that's who I am. He put those photos away, focusing on healing. Be back for some more petting. Letting on, go girl. of the trauma. A conversation yeah. with the police officer just days yeah. after he was attacked illustrates that. He asked me, how do you feel about this guy who did this to you? And I said, well, I said, uh, between you and me, I have to forgive him completely. And because I need all my energy for healing. And if I hold a grudge against him, then that's gonna rob me of my healing. Erickson still helps those in need, but he now meets them at public places and his home has a camera surveillance system. One thing that I think is critical is that people stop looking in the rear view mirror and look ahead. I say, you know, you can't drive through life if you're looking in the rearview mirror. And if they're always looking at what they lost rather than ahead of what they can acquire, then the recovery is slow. I think Russell's like, let's go. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have rear view mirrors in his car. <laughs> he took them off a long time ago. Despite all he has been through, the man with rocks in his pockets and a smile on his face will tell you he's one of the luckiest guys around. You can come out on the other side just as blessed or more blessed, even though you go through hard experiences.